Go on. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الْقِبْلَةَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُ الرَّسُولِ مِمَّنْ يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ So awesome. And we didn't make the Qibla that you used to be committed to, meaning Jerusalem. We, only, we put that there only for one reason, to get to know, to test, who will actually follow the Messenger, and who will turn back on his heels and go away. I told you earlier on, there are two groups, Muhajirun and Ansar. Muhajirun love Kaaba. A lot of the Ansar love Jerusalem. When the Muslims move to Medina, who is being tested? The Muhajirun, because they have to put their back to the Kaaba. When the ayah came, you have to pray towards Makkah. Who is being tested? The, the, the Ansar who have affiliation to Jerusalem. So in this way, both groups got tested. To Allah, testing whether they will obey Allah was more important, the direction of prayer was less important. Allah could have made the direction of the Kaaba, the Makkah, from the first ayat of the Qur'an. Why did He wait this long? Why did He wait this long? This is so important. Salah is so important. Aqeem al-Salah is it's so early in the Qur'an. Why not just tell the Prophet from the beginning, pray towards the Kaaba? He waited until he could test both groups. The people of Makkah and the people of Medina. Because the, the importance is not the direction of prayer, the importance is the command of Allah. That's what's, what actually matters. So now when he does this, the, you know, uh, notice by the way the language, it's so beautiful. We didn't change the, the, the direction of the Qibla, except we could see who will actually follow the Messenger. مِمَّنْ يَتَّبِعُ Rasul Rasul doesn't even explain himself, he prays towards Jerusalem. Nobody comes and asks him, Ya Rasulullah, why aren't we praying towards the Kaaba? Or when we're praying towards the Kaaba, he doesn't, nobody comes and asks him, why are we praying towards the Kaaba? Why aren't we praying towards Jerusalem anymore? The ayat hadn't even come yet. It seems to be the case, that the ayahs hadn't even come yet, and the Prophet was already praying in the, towards the Kaaba. Then the ayat came. Because that's why the fools will come and say, hey, what happened? Revelation hasn't even come yet. But the, the change has already happened. Now, when they turn their heels, مِمَّا يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَىٰ حَقِبَيْ In Qur'an, when somebody turns on their heels, it means they turn around and they run away. When you say turn around and run away, it means like run away from the battlefield, right? Qur'an uses that expression here to describe there are people who will turn around and run away because they don't want to follow the right direction of the Qibla. So it's literally, it's playing on the direction of the Qibla and the idea that they are retreating from Islam. إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَ اللَّهِ But the only people who will able, be able to follow this instruction is the ones Allah guided. إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ And it's going to be too big of a problem. إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةً It's going to be too big of a change. Except for those who Allah has guided. I would like to, as I, as I teach these ayat, what I like to emphasize is how does this apply to you and me today? Because Qibla already changed, alhamdulillah. It's not difficult for you to say, oh, no Jerusalem anymore, I guess I'm going to pray towards Kaaba. That problem is solved for you and me. But what do these ayat mean for you and me today? Here's what they mean. Sometimes you and I are learning about Islam. Actually, sometimes you and I are not learning about Islam. We hear things and we follow them since childhood. And later on in your life, you actually learn that that wasn't Islam. Later on in your life, you learn that there's something else. You're supposed to do something differently. Does that happen to you? When that happens to you, and you say, no, no, I'm not going to do things the old way anymore. I'll do them this because I studied this and I learned this, I'm going to follow this. Everybody in your family says what? You crazy? What happened to you? Why are you becoming so extreme? All of us do it this way. Oh, we're all wrong? Everybody's wrong now? Your grandfather was wrong too? His father was wrong too? And you're sitting there going, no, sorry. Because now you have to see, do you, do you follow your family? Because they're Muslim too. Or do you follow what you studied, what you learned? This is going to get you in big trouble. So people came to the, the Sahaba, and they said this, uh, and actually when the direction was changed, some Sahaba came to the Prophet and they said this, فَكَيْفَ بِالَّذِينَ مَاتُوا وَهُمْ يُصَلُّونَ إِلَى بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ Ya Rasulullah, there were lots of people who used to pray towards Jerusalem, and they died. So they were praying towards the wrong GPS direction. Their salah didn't count. What about them? And then what about all of our prayers? We were praying in these many years, we were praying towards Jerusalem. If that was wrong, none of those prayers counted. 
And so when that came, that, that distinction came, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah will not ever be someone who wastes your iman. Allah will not waste your iman. It's beautiful, isn't it? They said our prayers are wasted. Allah didn't say Allah will not waste your prayer. Allah said Allah will not waste your iman. Because prayer is only valuable when you pray with iman. The direction was less important. Somebody stuck in the middle of the dark at night in the desert somewhere and they have to pray and their, their phone has no service, so the app for the Qibla is not working. You know, they don't have a compass, so nothing. They're like, Ya Allah, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? They're like, eeny, meeny, miny, Kaaba. And they just... And then later on when they, you know, when they find out, they pray towards Disney World, instead of the Kaaba. Did their prayer count or no? Did it count or no? You know why it counted? Because they prayed with what? Iman. The other beautiful thing here is Salah is Iman to Allah. To Allah there is no difference between Salah and Iman. That should tell you how important Salah is. Because no Salah to Allah is the same as no Iman. Oh man, that's heavy. That's a, don't use that on your children. That's for you and for me. The state of your Salah is the state of your Iman. When you don't give a lot of value to your salah, you're not giving a lot of value to your iman. When you take care of your salah, you're taking care of your iman. No difference between the two. This is why, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِعَ إِمَانَكُمْ Allah will never waste your iman. Your iman, direction is not dependent on it. وَإِن كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَ اللَّهُ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِعَ إِمَانَكُمْ but what about the people, and this is imanakum, your iman, the people who asked the question. But they asked the question about people who died a long time ago. But the answer is Allah will not waste your iman. But what about their iman? So Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah, in regards to all people, has always been رَؤُوفُ rahim, Has always been extremely compassionate, always been loving, always been caring, has always known what they're going through. I take you back to that one example because it's my favorite example, the people of the cave. In my studies, I am convinced that Ashabul Kahf had no idea of any prophets. They had no idea about any prophets or any book. All they knew was, idol worship is wrong, there can only be one God. That's all they knew. And they made up their prayers. You guide us, you tell us what to do. We don't know what to do. Was that good enough for Allah too? Yeah. Allah didn't say, well, they didn't even make wudu before they asked me. They don't even have ijazah in tajweed. He didn't care. Because in Allah bin nas لَرَؤُفُ rahim. Allah is compassionate, caring, understanding, loving and merciful to all people across the board. He spares them. Don't think Allah is ready to punish. We have, unfortunately for a lot of people in the religion, this happened to the people before us, the Jews, they became very strict. And they used to make it look like, sound like Allah will punish you at every turn. Oh, you did this wrong, Allah will punish you. You did that, oh, Allah will punish you. You know? Somebody, somebody came to the masjid after many years, they made wudu, they missed a few drops, and you're like, oh, this guy, his salah is not gonna count. So sad, he's gonna burn. Don't do that. We, this, is, this is the teaching here. Even if they were praying in the entirely wrong direction, in Allah bin Nasi la Ra'ufur Rahim. Finally, the ayah. Man, I, I gotta tell you this. You guys know the story of Musa alayhi salam, right? When Musa alayhi salam spoke with Allah, Allah told him to go to Fir'aun. And when he, when he told him to go to Fir'aun, he made a list of problems. Musa made a list of problems. He said, you know, إِنِّي أَخَافُ وَنْ يَقْتُلُونَ وَيَضِيقُ الصَّدْرِ وَلَا يَنْطَلِقُ لِسَانِي فَأَرْسِلِ اللَّهَ هَرُونَ وَهُمْ عَلَيَّ ذَنبٌ لَهُمْ عَلَيَّ ذَنبٌ You know, يُكَذِّبُونَ and then يَقْتُلُونَ They will call me a liar. They're going, my tongue doesn't move, I become frustrated, I can't speak properly. I need backup, I need help, could you give me Harun? They might even kill me before they let me speak. He made a list of problems. And then Allah answered him. What's beautiful about the ayah that we're about to read, 
is that Allah is also just like He answered Musa, He's gonna answer Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But look at how He answers Rasulullah. Qad nara taqalluba wajhika fi sama. We saw your face turning towards the sky, and qad nara suggests the takfir. We keep seeing your face turning towards the sky. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wouldn't even ask. He didn't ask. He was just hurting in his heart that his back is towards the house of his father Ibrahim. So he would just, just kind of look at the sky. And the other beautiful thing is, تَقَلُّبُ wajhika means your face itself turned. Instead of you turned your face, the face itself turned. You know sometimes you do a, a body action and you can't even control it. You hear a sound and you just go like that. And you didn't even intend to do that. You just, reaction. It's suggesting the Prophet ﷺ can't even help himself. Every now and then he just... You know, every time he's about to pray, and he's not facing the Qibla, he's just, his eyes just go into the sky. His face just goes into the sky. And Allah says he noticed. He noticed that you have that reaction. So you don't have to ask. Every time you turn your face into the sky. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا then we are, we swear to it, therefore, that we are absolutely turning you without a doubt, without a doubt, in a, in a direction that makes you happy, that pleases you. This is the ayah, <coughs> it's the only ayah of the actual ch- reason for the change of the qibla. You have later, you know, all around we've learned it was the house built by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Later on Allah will command, turn in its direction. But the first reason Allah gave openly was that the Prophet ﷺ was sad. And now to make him happy, I'm changing the direction. In a direction that makes you happy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What a maqam of Rasulullah Wasallam that the reason we pray towards the Qibla is it pleases Rasulullah Wasallam. So, so beautiful. And by the way, the happiness of our Prophet is the same as the happiness of Allah. Because when the Kaaba was finally cleaned up, رَضِيتُ لَكُمْ وَالْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ The same verbiage was used. You know, I've, I, I'm pleased with for you, as Islam is your religion. Now the thing that I'd like to highlight here, remember I told you the Prophet will testify against us? Or for us, before? Think about this. Allah changed the Qibla for him, did he even have to ask? No. Allah changed the Qibla. And on Judgment Day, he'll actually ask. How heavy is that? How heavy a burden is that? So we, we have to know, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ We're dealing with the Messenger of Allah وسلم. It's not a light matter. فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Turn your face then, in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, the sanctified masjid, the, you know, the, the sacred masjid. Now the term Al-Masjid Al-Haram was new, the Arabs did not use it. They used Al-Bayt, Al-Bayt Al-Atiq, Kaaba. These are known names. But the Qur'an used what phrase? Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Al-Masjid is a dharf from the word sajada, which means to do sajda. The place of sajda. So the, the, the official name of the Kaaba is Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Al-Masjid Al-Haram. That's in the Quran, right? Now why is that important? There are lots of things we do at the Masjid, at, 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 at Kaaba. We do tawaf, we do i'tikaf, we do salah. But in the word Masjid, which act is highlighted? Which is the most important act? Sajda. Because from it comes the word masjid, right? Now why is sajda important? Go back. The first battle, that's the first story that's mentioned in the Quran here, is a story of Adam, which was a problem of what? Refusal to do? Sajda. We are the final soldiers of that battle. And when do you win that battle against shaitan? When you fall into sajda. Because when you fall into sajda, you do the opposite of what shaitan did. You do the opposite of what shaitan did. And now the house that is supposed to be there so that humanity until the day of judgment can do sajda, that's the house that you are now to pray in direction of. That is your mission. Subhanallah. So profound by calling it al-masjid al-haram. The sacred place of doing sajda. The sanctified place of doing sajda. وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ And wherever you may be, فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَهُ Then you should turn your faces in its direction. The first part of it was for Rasulullah wasallam. Wherever you must turn towards the Qibla, towards Al-Masjid Al-Haram, then he turns to the Ummah and says, by the way, you also. 
all of you also turn towards it. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ لَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ No doubt about it. Those who were given the book, they know that it is the truth from their master. They also know that this is the right qibla. I'll give you one example of that from the Qur'an that should be enough. How do the Christians and Jews, especially the Jews, how do they know that this is the Kaaba? For them, which was, Kaaba had no value. Which, which place had value? Jerusalem. Quran says they know. How do they know? For the Jews, who's the most important prophet? Do you know? Hmm? Torah given to who? Musa. I'll tell you something about Musa. Musa accidentally killed a person. He punched somebody and he died. Then he ran away to Egypt, from Egypt to Madian. He ran away from Egypt to where? Madian. Madian is Arab. Madian is Arab land. When he went to Madian, he got married. You know this, right? When he got married, he married a, 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 an old man's daughter from Madian, which means he married an Arab. It's pretty awesome. When you, I talked to my Jewish friends, it was like, Moses married Arab. So his kids are like, you know, half Arab. And according to some of them, ethnicity comes from the mother. So I'm like, his kids are Arab according to you. <laughs> but anyway, when he did marry, in Madian, you know his father said, the, the girl's father said, you must work for me for eight years. Or you could do ten. Eight years or you could do ten. You know how he said it? And ta'jurani thamaniya hijaj. You will work for me for eight hajj. Eight hajj. Or you could do ten hajj. How many hajj do we do in a year? One. Which land was this? Arab land, yes or no? Arab land. And in the Arab land, an Arab old man says, you will work for me for ten, for ten hajj. When you say the word hajj, what location are you making reference to? Jerusalem? Has hajj ever been done in Jerusalem? Hajj is being done around the Kaaba since the time of Ibrahim a.s. When he says eight or eight or ten hajj, he's telling Musa a.s. about the Kaaba. And Musa a.s. himself knows about the Kaaba. And why wouldn't he? He lived among a believer, within a believer in the Arab land from the children of Ibrahim a.s. Why wouldn't he know? Subhanallah. They know. They know. And Qur'an gives us hints that they know, even though they buried it away. You know, when I was reading Hamiduddin Farahi's book on Ar-Ra'yu Sahih fi Man Huwa Zabih about how much they know about the Kaaba or don't know, he said when they took, because they don't say Ismail was slaughtered, they say, you know, Ishaq was slaughtered. But we say Ismail was slaughtered. So they say he took Is 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 Ishaq to the valley of Sakka, between Shifa and Mura, that's what the Jews say. A valley called Sakka, between Shifa and Mura. So they took Mecca and turned it into what? Sakka. And Safa and Marwa, what did they turn it into? Shifa and Mura. You're like, there's no Shifa Mura anywhere. There's no Sakka anywhere. Where can, where's this valley? They changed a little bit spelling here and there. And from Mecca became Sakka, and Safa became Shifa, and Marwa became Mura. And <laughs> SubhanAllah, they know. They know about the Kaaba. They know it was built by their father Ibrahim alayhi salam. You know? So they, Allah says, لَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ They absolutely know that it is the truth from their master. وَمَ اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is not unaware of what they do. Allah knows full well what they do. I'd like to conclude inshaAllah ta'ala with the following. There are in Western Islamic studies, there are those who still question the Kaaba. They say, oh, the Arabs, they came up with their own sort of story about Abraham and... It has nothing to do with the Bible because since it's not in the Bible, it's not authentic. And you know, why would they even pray in that direction? They were better off praying towards Jerusalem. Allah's words become true even today. Sayaqulu sufaha umin al nas ma wallahum an qiblati himulati kanu alaiha. The fools among the people will say, why? What turned them away from the direction of Jerusalem towards Makkah? The fools will say they still say to this day. There's still PhDs, professors in universities are still saying the same thing to this day. And Qur'an is still commenting on them saying, سَيَقُولُ سُفَهَا أُمِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَاللَّهُمْ عَنْ قِبْلَتِهِمْ أَلَّتِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا The heart of the, the, the lesson here that I wanted to come, you know, give across to you, inshaAllah ta'ala, is that, that the change of the Qibla 
it represents a huge shift in the way that we, the Muslim Ummah thinks. We are not concerned about ourselves, we're concerned about all of humanity. And that is evidenced in the fact that we are the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So that's inshallah the crux of the lesson today. I hope you guys got something beneficial out of it. I would urge you to read these ayat yourselves. I'll hope to continue this series. This entire passage is from 142 to 152 actually. So we did it up to 144. There's a few more very heavy ayat left inshallah ta'ala to cover. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.